everybody. Alongside Chuck Long, I'm Kevin Kugler. It's great to have you with us this afternoon at Michigan Stadium, where if you listen closely, you can still hear the echoes of the cheers from last week's big win over Notre Dame. The question is, how do they move past that game and avoid a letdown today? Well, the challenge for head coach Brady Hoke in Michigan is to play well after an emotional victory against Notre Dame last week. How do you do that? You get off to a fast start on both sides of the football. Well, let's take a look at the principal financial group edge to the game and see just how they accomplish this. Ground game growth is the key for Michigan today, and not just Devin Gardner running with the football. They like to get their running backs involved a little bit more with the ground game today. On defense, pressure the quarterback. Coach Hoke was not happy with pressuring the quarterback last week. He wants to see more of that today. The Michigan Wolverines challenge defeat the Akron Zips today. The head coach of Akron, Terry Bowden, is standing by with our Lisa Byington. Thanks, Kevin. You have been around this game for a while, but have never coached here at the Big House. Personalize your emotions here this afternoon. Well, it's just a great opportunity for our young men, you know, to be able to come to a place with over 100,000 and play a storied program like Michigan. It, it's something every ki kid grows up wanting to do, and so the, the opportunity for our players to have that experience uh, is what you really look forward to. How do you tell your players to manage this moment in this game play one play at a time play your position it's not about Akron and Michigan it's about you and that man over you and trying to win one more play than he does trying to focus on that little part then hope the ball bounces your way have fun thank you thank you Lisa well that's a big key have fun today and that's what Akron is trying to do as we take a look at the impact players for Michigan and it starts with the quarterback Devin Gardner well it all starts with him Kevin he makes the whole team go just watching him on tape he's electric he can make bad plays into good plays with his feet and Jeremy Gallon a guy who helps him make those big plays his best friend they worked all summer long for for the right chemistry they have it going right now early in the year it's good to see that happen and Blake Count is proving he's back from his injury a year ago with two picks on Saturday first of his career and he also tackled well Kevin so look for that again today they're very happy with their cornerback tackling well, it is a perfect day for football. You look at the sky, barely a cloud, 61 degrees, mostly sunny skies, a mild breeze out of the southwest at three miles an hour. Chuck, you and I were down on the field talking with coaches before the game, and you can't ask for a better day for college football than what we have here this afternoon. Beautiful day in Michigan, and it, it, there's no wind, hardly any wind today, so it shouldn't affect the kicking game. It, it's picture perfect for a great day of football. Brady Hoke has given the fans in Ann Arbor a lot to cheer about in his tenure 16 and 0 at home as head coach talk about a home field advantage as Michigan wins the toss they defer Akron is going to receive the kickoff and he told us yesterday that if he won the toss he was going to defer because he wanted to see some of these young kids flying around on special teams right out of the game and that's where you can get off to a fast start in a game like this as I mentioned hey you, you come off an emotional victory against Notre Dame Special teams will be a key factor today to get off to a fast start. Freeman and Trailer Bennett back deep for Akron. It'll be Trailer Bennett from the five. Trailer Bennett down at the 25-yard line, and Akron will take over on offense there for the first time today. The tackle by Thomas, and the Akron zips. While Michigan is in great shape at quarterback today with Gardner, Akron's got a little bit of a problem at quarterback today, and that's health. Kyle Pohl gets the start. You see the numbers this season, but he's battling a sprained left ankle. His backup, Nick Hirschman, who's been really neck and neck with him since transferring from Colorado, he's not going to play today. They've got some concerns at a very important spot. They do, and look for a young man named Dalton Easton to get in the game at quarterback as the game goes. Jawan Chisholm gets the carry and a big hole on first down and Chisholm has the first down to the 37 a pickup of 12 Thomas Gordon on the stop for the Michigan Wolverines Chisholm's a good back for them but look for them to be running back by committee today for for two reasons number one they feel good about their running back situation and for health reasons keep them fresh and healthy Akron will run out of the spread there three receivers to the bottom of your screen Two receivers to the top. Four-man rush for Michigan, and the pass knocked away. An incomplete good defensive play by Brennan Beyer, who's had six tackles and a pair of sacks already this season. The Akron zips one and one on the year, and their offensive starters scrolling at the top of your screen. Akron with a win over James Madison last week. 
lost their opener to a, a very good Central Florida team that's in the Big Ten today taking on Penn State. Second down and 10 at the 37. Hole airing it deep and the pass almost intercepted at the 30 yard line coming over to get his fingers on it Jared Wilson who almost made a sliding diving grab at the 30. Jared Wilson made a nice play as a free safety in the middle of the field but uh, Paul just hung the ball up too long he had to get rid of that ball a little faster so far there's no pressure for the from the Michigan defensive front on the, on the pole. One of the big things that Greg Madison told us yesterday, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, they really wanted to see improvement on today. They weren't thrilled with their pass rush last week against Notre Dame. Third down and 10 at the 37. Flushed out. Pull. Nobody open, and Pole maybe gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Everything closing quickly. Frank Clark chasing down Kyle Pole, and Akron will put it away. You can see him. Pole, he's a, he's a little ginger right now. He's having a hard time running, but he has to learn to get down, protect himself a little bit better. He's got a long season ahead. Don't take hits like that. Michigan defense got him in a third long situation. Good situation defensively to get a team in, and they capitalize on that. Dennis Norfleet back awaiting the Paul punt. And a wobbly punt. Takes a bit of an Akron bounce and it'll be down at the 25 yard line where it's first down and 10. So Michigan will have their first possession of the ball game after the 38 yard punt. And there's Devin Gardner wearing number 98 in honor of Michigan legend, really American hero, Tom Harmon. The Michigan halfback from 1938 to 1940 closed out his final football game against Ohio State with three rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns. That was the last time 98 was on the field until this past week against Notre Dame when Devin Gardner accounted for five touchdowns. And the first play from scrimmage buried in the backfield is Fitz Toussaint. Cody Grice able to come in for the stop. And there's Devin Gardner had one of the best games in Michigan history last week. The numbers for the season, 376 yards total offense against Notre Dame. Ninth best game in Michigan history. He was spectacular almost from start to finish. Michigan fans would say there was that one interception at the end of the game. But... Devin Gardner was really, really good in the win over Notre Dame last week. On the slant, good grab at the 28-yard line. Malachi Freeman on the stop of Jeremy Gallon. And the Michigan Wolverines offense led by Fitz Toussaint scrolling at the top of your screen. You see a nice, nice slant completion by uh, Devin Gardner. I think that's where he's really improved as, as a quarterback, his accuracy over time since he's been here at Michigan. Third down and seven. Dilio in motion. Four-man rush. Gardner with lots of time. Good grab over the middle on a first down. Devin Funches all the way to the 46-yard line on third and seven. Funches able to pick up 17 in a first down. You see the confidence that offensive coordinator Al Borges has in his, in his quarterback, Devin Gardner. He throws a ball for a first down over the middle of the field. That is designated the interception area for an offense, but he has total confidence in him to make that play. It's good to see that. Five catches on the year coming in for Funches. On first down at the 46, a quick screen out to Joe Reynolds, who was limited last week after an injury in week one. He's back out there. And let's look at the auto owners insurance starting defense for Akron. It's scrolling across the top of your screen. Malachi Freeman had his second tackle for that Zips defense just a moment ago. And look for the Zip, zip defense, Kevin, to do it. Show a lot of things that, to the Michigan offense. All kinds of blitzes. All kinds of coverages. It could be a wild day defensively for Akron. Second down and nine. Gardner now four for four. 
headed up the field. Not much room to run for Dennis Norfleet as Justin March made a good open field tackle. Look for a minute, Chuck, like that play had potential to be a big one. It did. It was a nice play defensively. I like the way Devin Gardner adjusted his arm to make that throw with the defender right in his face. Again, the growth of, the, of a quarterback over time, you see that's what you see as they grow, especially with, with Al Borges as your offensive coordinator. Third down and four. Gardner with that completion a moment ago. Now, quarterbacks in Michigan are 10 of 15 this year on third down. The team that's been excellent in third down conversion the last couple of years as Gardner throws has another conversion to Funches. Funches breaking tackles and on the run. Devin Funches will take it all the way for the touchdown. What a start for the Michigan Wolverines. On for the extra point, Brendan Gibbons. And the kick is good. Devin Funches with the longest catch of his career. 48 yards for the score. And Devin Funches and the Michigan Wolverines take the early 7-0 lead. 10-29 to go in the first. Devin Gardner fired up with a quick start for Michigan. Football and BTN is presented by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. And brought to you by Case IH. Be ready with the proven leader. Visit caseih.com slash efficient power. And by the Principal Financial Group. The Principal Financial Group can help build, grow, and protect your financial future. Not sure anything says college football more than watching Michigan run out and touch the Go Blue banner here at Michigan Stadium as the kickoff will go into the end zone for the touchback. Wolverines with a 7-0 lead, 10-29 left in this first quarter. And Chuck Long, a tremendous start for Devin Gardner and the Michigan offense. Well, just a simple stick route by Funches right here in space of the defense. And it said he's got to make the play there and make the tackle. Anthony Holmes has to make that tackle for Ackman, but there's Devin Gardner. And love his reaction, love his fire. That's what you want out of your quarterback there, Kevin. Gets everybody juiced up. Yeah. Is it Akron or is it Notre Dame? You wouldn't know by the reaction from Devin Gardner. Five for five on that drive for 77 yards for Gardner. What a start. On first down, Chisholm trying to find some running room, and he gets maybe two to the 27-yard line as we take a check of the auto owner's insurance starting defense for the Michigan Wolverines. They were not on the field very long in that first series, just four plays. A defense that's continuing to improve under defensive coordinator Greg Madison, who's got a real young group to work with this year. They're, they're young on both sides of the football. Good start on both sides of the football. Exactly what they want after that Notre Dame victory last week. Jerome Lewis, the motion man, on second down. They set up the screen. Chisholm trying to turn it upfield. He's one of the better receivers out of the backfield in the back. Cam Gordon able to make the stop three yards shy of an accurate first down. I love the way the Michigan safeties really run to the football. They missed a couple of tackles last week, but they are very aggressive and they really run to the football well. This was a, a game in which the coaches at Michigan told us yesterday, all week long, they put on their seniors. They said this is a senior game. Cam Borden, the senior, making the tackle there. That leadership trying to keep them from having a letdown. So far, it looks like mission accomplished. Quick start on both sides. Third down, and now a first down on a good, strong throw to Dee Fryson, Blake Countess on the coverage, but Akron moves the chains. Both teams right now are attacking the, the slot-type areas of the field right near the hashes. That's where the space is usually against these defenses uh, in their philosophy, and especially in the zone, when they play zone. There's Terry Bowden, the head coach of Akron. 20th season as a collegiate head coach. Spent six years at the helm of the Auburn Tigers. Good to see him get back in. 
Chisholm. Got a decent block and out near the 41 yard line. Jerome Lewis, the tight end with the block. James Ross, the third on the tackle for Michigan. Chisholm's running hard. The 11th leading rusher in Akron school history. Over 2,000 yards in his career. He's just fallen short of 1,000 yard seasons each of the last two years. You see the numbers coming in in his career. An average of almost five yards per carry. That's pretty good. He's their workforce. They're, they're going to need him all year. They're in a turnaround year or trying to turn this program around. It's been a rough program over the years. They're going to need him. Good patience, good time for Cole to throw. And L.T. Smith with the catch. And another Akron first down. Jordan Lewis on the stop. Greg Madison was looking for pass rush. What have you seen from it so far? Uh, they don't have much right now. They're trying to rush with four down linemen. They may have to add an extra fifth as the game goes on, but they're not getting there with four at this point in time. Paul has plenty of time to throw. And that, that's something Coach Madison did not want to happen. He's looking for a four-man rush today to get to the quarterback. Well, and you've got to believe Akron's happy that Paul has that time he didn't have a lot of mobility the left leg in a brace the left ankle sprain as they give up the middle into Michigan territory to the 49 yard line Roderick Alexander gets the carry so far coach Bowden who's, who's part of the play calling uh, is slowing this offense down right now and using more clock he usually is a fast-paced tempo type coach when he calls plays but he's trying to use some clock right now so he can so he, he can take some possessions away from Michigan. Do you like that strategy on his part? I do. Good strategy. Second and seven. Pull flushed and just has to throw it away. That pressure was coming hot and heavy that time. Jabril Black got back there and forced Cole to get rid of it. This is what they're looking for. They finally get it. Just a little twist stunt inside. Made Pull throw it early. There's nobody open though. That's good coverage down the field. Jabril Black, the junior out of Cincinnati on third down and seven at the Michigan 49. Showing blitz. Here they come. Cole going to change things up as a result. That's the advantage of no huddle. You have time to get to a new play. Here comes pressure up the middle. Pole drilled as he throws and the pass incomplete. Kyle Pole got absolutely crushed by Frank Clark as he got rid of the football. And it's fourth down. And there's the pass rush. Those last two plays that Greg Madison won. They finally got there, but they, they brought some blitz to get there. And, and Pole made a nice throw. He's got to come up. He seems got to come up with that ball. Here comes the pressure right up the middle. That's a, that's a rip shot. Those hurt. Those are hope he has rip pads on. Speaking from experience, Chuck Long, well, you didn't take too many shots, did you? Uh, that Iowa offensive line protected you. I had great offensive lines. I did not get hit very much. Deleo with the fair catch makes it off to his side at the 11-yard line, and it'll belong to Michigan deep in their own end. Devin Gardner and the Wolverine offense back out with a 7-0 lead. If you can't find your game, go to btn.com slash gamefinder right now to see where you can find your game. Kevin Kugler, Chuck Long, Lisa Byington back with you at the big house in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Michigan with a 7-0 lead, 639 remaining in this first quarter. Wolverines start at their own 10-yard line. Great drive to start the game from Devin Gardner. Was 5 for 5 for 77 yards on the opening drive. See if they get too soft a little bit down here. Little end around action, trying to find some running room on the outside. Pretty good coverage by Akron at the 12-yard line. Lisa Byington's down on the field. Very good protection for Lisa <laughs> down there. Yes, I would say so. A couple of offensive linemen, Steve Hutchinson and Jeff Backus, being honored here today. You didn't have a chance to come back very often. You said this is only your third game. What's the best part about being back? Um, I think just not having the stress of game day, being able to be a fan and and you know cheer for the team, but not have to worry about if I'm going to do my job today. Uh, that's a, you know that's that's probably the best part about it. Jeff, from one left tackle to another, what impresses you most about Taylor Luan and watching him? I just like his athletic ability, his aggressiveness. Um, 
and he's starting to understand what's, what it means to be a Michigan offensive lineman. And he's really kind of bought into that tradition and trying to help teach it. And uh, I've just been impressed with him every time I've, I've, I've seen him play and every time I've met him. You guys came in together at Michigan, and you were drafted in the same year in 2001. You guys always get along? Is that true? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, we lived with each other, and I think there was, there was some times, just like, probably being have a, with a brother that you, you, you get sick of each other. But, I mean, Jeff's probably the closest guy that I still stay in touch with that, that I played with and uh, you know we, we've had such parallel pa uh, careers that you know we, we kind of we're kind of on this, each other's same page. All right thank you for the time enjoy your time back. Thank you very much Lisa you saw Devin Gardner showing the elusiveness there but a good defensive series for Akron Chuck. Yeah it was a tough that's tough uh, the Michigan offense they tried to get the run game going they are very young on the inside three from both their guards and center, very young players, and so far they haven't been able to generate anything up front. And a wobbly punt at the 35, and it'll take an Akron roll and down near the Michigan 30-yard line. So Akron is going to have wonderful field position at the 31 of Michigan after just a 21-yard punt from Michigan's Matt Weil. Terry Bowden's troops with an opportunity. Can they cash in trailing 7-0? BTN football today on the campus of the University of Michigan as Akron and Michigan lock up in a non-conference showdown. First down at the 31-yard line. New quarterback in, and it's a high snap, and Zach DeRazio who is a wide receiver that was moved from quarterback to wide receiver in spring of 2011. Comes in and the snap's over his head. That's just a bad snap here. It's a good job by Durazio to get on the football. And this is just uh, an issue with their health right now, quarterback. Now pulls back out there. As Durazio heads over to the sideline, messing with his gloves. He wants another chance. <laughs> Second down and 15, a loss of five on that first play. Chisholm fighting back near the original line of scrimmage down at the 32-yard line. Tackle from Mario Ojemudia. Edwards working on the left side, their left side of the offensive line. Defensive line's right side. That's been most, that's where they've been running the ball the most so far in this football game. Empty backfield here with Kyle Poole on the gun. Showing blitz again. Desmond Morgan was creeping up towards the line. Akron one for three on third this afternoon. And they're forced to use a timeout. A lot of confusion on the Akron side. And the Zips will talk it over. Big play here, third down and 11 at the Michigan 32-yard line. Terry Bowden and Akron trying to figure out what to do against this Michigan D. This October, BTN's award-winning original series is back. It's the show with an unprecedented look inside the Big Ten season. The Journey, Big Ten Football 2013, presented by Best Buy, premieres October 9th on BTN. I know where I will be October 9th in front of my television, checking out the journey. What a tremendous program. Football and basketball. Never miss it. Be sure you're there October 9th. First or third down and 11 at the 32. Four-man rush. A little pressure. Cole. Nice throw on the run to trailer Bennett, but he's going to be well short of the first down at the Michigan 28. Blake Countess, part of that Wolverine swarm to bury him there. Good decision by Paul here on the scramble. Try to get some of it back. It's a third and 11 situation. It's probably not going to happen against a good Michigan defense. Try to get some of it back to give your field goal kicker a chance for three points. It's exactly what they did here. Give him a chance. Robert Stein has hit eight straight field goals, first attempt of the year. Nine for 12 last year with a long of 46. This would be from 46. And the kick by Stein is good. Right down the middle. 
for the sophomore from Cincinnati. So Akron able to take advantage of some good defense and a short punt to get on the board, and they trail Michigan 7-3. to three. That's a win for, the, for Akron, obviously, getting some points when they had field position. All head coaches want you to capitalize on that situation. They, should, they did it that, at this point. Terry Bowden, head coach, and of course the son of legendary head coach Bobby Bowden. His brother Jeff is on his staff. Terry back into coaching at North Alabama after over a decade working on our side of the camera. And now back on the sidelines doing what he loves, and that's coaching. And there's Chuck Amato. You've probably recognized him from if you watched any Florida State games in the 80s, 90s, or 2000s, or North Carolina State in the 2000s, former head coach there. And 21 years on Bobby Bowden's staff at Florida State. We had a lot of fun talking with both of those guys this week. We did. It's the, it's the Bowden family staff. And it's always nice to have people that you know. And if they are quality coaches, that makes for really good chemistry. And they certainly have that. back deep for Michigan awaiting the kickoff short kick Northfleet from the 12 looking for a hole he has a little one and just tripped up across the 25 at the 26 yard line well there's Terry Bowden we talked about the staff that's been put together by Terry Bowden and a lot of guys that his dad there on the right had there's Terry at Samford and at Auburn celebrating an undefeated season in 1993 Terry, John Saunders on the ABC set. And there he is with his brother, Tommy. And look at the caption. Do you have one of these? And he signed it, Bobby Bowden. Could he have signed it, Dad? <laughs> Maybe it takes some of the value out. Just keeping him honest. Play action on first down. Gardner finds Gallon. And Gallon driven out near the 35-yard line by Justin March. Just a simple curl route on the outside against man press coverage, meaning the defender's right in the receiver's face the whole way. Gallon uses his strength to come back to the football. Easy pitch and catch. They've worked that route quite a bit so far this year. Second down and two. Funches the motion man. Fits Toussaint. Had a hole. Nice cutback. And Toussaint with a nice run out to the 45-yard line, a pickup of 11. Let's check in with Dave Repson in Chicago for a studio update. Well, Kevin Quincy Anunwa had three touchdowns in his career coming into this year. This is his fourth of this season, 7-3 Nebraska over UCLA. Good start for the Huskers in Lincoln in one of four matchups today between the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Big Ten Pac-12 day today. Not here, though. It's a max showdown for Michigan. On first and ten at the 45-yard line as Toussaint picking his way through a hole. Fits Toussaint with another first down. And a tackle in the secondary by Anthony Holmes. It could have been a saving tackle for Akra. Two back-to-back -back good runs by Fitz Toussaint. Nice run there. They went right over Michael Schofield, their, their senior tackle. When you're young inside, try to get to the outside some where you have more veteran leadership. It's exactly what Michigan did. Good call by Al Borges. Senior tackles, Schofield on one end, Taylor Lewan, of course, on the left side. 90 seconds to go in this first quarter, a 7-3 Michigan lead. Wolverines marching. Get some running game going on, which is what they want. Try to Sant again. Slips one tackle, but he's dropped by Nick Rossi. It was C.J. James, Chuck, that got there first and really threw off that play. It did. It's a tough play into the boundary, uh, a, a power sweep like that when you don't have much room. The sideline becomes your friend defensively. It's like an extra tackler. Forces, forces everything inside where you have a lot of defensive help. But I like the way that they're trying to rush the football and with the running backs, not just Devin Gardner running the ball. That's one thing they wanted to see. So far, they've really given that effort to get that run game going. Nice little play to Northland. And Northland with a first down inside the 30 and down to the 27-yard line. Dennis Northland scoots ahead for 15 before Dylan Evans could make the stop. 
Northleach is the guy that head coach Brady Holt said to keep an eye on. Has a lot of speed. Great special teams player. Here he is getting involved early in the offense. Just a little simple middle screen with both guards and center leading the way. Nice play. I like the misdirection at the top of the play from Gardner. Drew a couple of eyes to the opposite side before he went in. From the 27 on first down. Toussaint trying to be patient, but that hole, if it was there, it all closed quickly. Justin March on the tackle and a loss on the play back to the 29. When you rush the football, you don't want to take lost yardage plays. That's a no-no, and I know Coach Hope is not going to be happy with that. We have reached the end of one quarter in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And the Michigan Wolverines, with an early touchdown, have the 7-3 lead after one. Great place for college football and a wonderful afternoon in Ann Arbor. Wolverines by four. The final drive tonight on BTN. Alongside Chuck Long with Lisa Byington on the field, I'm Kevin Kugler. Good to have you with us as we start the second quarter. Terry Bowden on your left, Brady Hoke on the right. A couple of head coaches looking on at a second and 11 for Michigan at the 28. Gardner chased on the play fake, throwing for the end zone, and it's deflected away at the last moment by Emmanuel Lardy. Tremendous defensive play as for just a bit. Jeremy Jackson was open in that back corner. That was a great play by Lardy. Uh, Gardner just hung it up just a little bit too much, and he needed to bring that ball to the outside to the pylon more. But he's on the run. It's hard to throw when you're on the run like that so fast. That was a nice play by Lardy. Just a great indiv individual effort. Now they're in a third and 11 here, which is what they don't want to be in. Tough to get first downs here. And you're third and 11. Don't want to take a sack here. You're in field goal range. DeLeo in motion on third down. Pressure coming up the middle. Gardner in some trouble. Gardner in all kinds of trouble, and he just floats it towards the sideline. Incomplete. Albert Presley back there again, and we've seen some pretty consistent pressure from that Akron front. Well, one, one thing that Michigan needs to do a better job of is their cadence. I believe that Akron's got a bead on their cadence. They need to mix it up a little bit because they're coming off the ball quicker than Michigan is. That's a good... Uh, Kind of a dangerous throwaway here, but at least he got it away and did not take the sack when they are in field goal point territory. And was able to get it in the direction of Devin Funches. You heard our referee saying no intentional grounding. Funches was right in the area. And Brendan Gibbons lining up for a field goal, but first a timeout taken by Michigan. That takes, that takes a lot of arm strength to, to, make, mm -hmm. to make that throw. Not too many quarterbacks can do that and make that kind of throw under that kind of pressure and get it near a receiver. Shows you the arm strength that Devin Gardner has. Akron feeling pretty good right now about their trip to the big house. A 7-3 ball game. Michigan tried to add to the lead with a 45-yard field goal coming up. Weeknights join the conversation on BTN Live. It's the most comprehensive nightly college football discussion from the guys who love to talk about the game. BTN Live, weeknights at 6 Eastern on BTN. 45-yarder for Gibbons. His long this year is 44. He's hit 16 straight field goals. And his career long is 52, so he's certainly got the leg by plenty for this 45-yarder. He was hitting these in practice. And this one is no good. Gibbons misses wide to the right, and a streak of 16 straight made field goals goes by the boards, and Michigan unable to capitalize on that scoring opportunity. Gibbons missing just wide right, and the score stays 7-3 Wolverines. Devin Gardner, 7 of 10 for 100 yards so far today, but the field goal missed by Gibbons Keeps it 7-3, and Akron takes over at the 28-yard line, first down and 10. Chisholm trying to get to the outside. Great penetration by that Michigan defense as James Ross III was in there to close the door as he tried to turn the corner. That was a rare blitz call by defensive coordinator Greg, Greg Madison. 
He's been all four-man rushed for, on first down, except for that play. Finally brought somebody off the edge as a mix-in. He doesn't like to do that too much, but he'll mix it in on first down. Second down and 12 now, the loss of two by Chisholm. A quick toss, and it's dropped by DeRazio. Both times Zach DeRazio has gotten his hands on the ball, it's dropped. One on a high snap at quarterback, and that one is a wide receiver. Needs to check his gloves. It's right, right, nice throw by Cole. Nice throw right in there, right between two defenders. And saved him from a big hit, too. So now third down and 12, and this Michigan defense trying to stand up, but an extra guy on the field just gets off. Going to a three-man front here, see if they bring an extra player with that three-man front. Pressure coming. And Paul had to get rid of it because Jabril Black, who's been living in the backfield in this first half, got to Paul once more. Tried to set up a screen pass. It looked like the play was destined for failure at the very beginning. But it was trying to set up a screen pass. It's, huge. it's, a, it's always a, a good call on third and long, especially when you're backed up. They got pressure with three men right there. It was only three-man rush. Not sure what they're trying to set up there, Kevin. Uh, an odd look indeed. Northfleet back, awaiting the Zach Paul punt. What a lot of traffic around that football as it rolls inside the 30-yard line. Took a nice Akron bounce and will be down at the 27. Zach Paul able to come up with a 47-yard punt and put Michigan at their 27-yard line. So Devin Gardner and company back to work once again. Jeremy Gallon and that Michigan offense ready to go. You see Gardner in his seven games as a starting quarterback. Some pretty impressive numbers in there, Chuck. Very impressive, and he's 23 of 27 in the red zone with touchdowns since he's been in as a starting quarterback. First down to Son. Hit and dropped. C.J. James. We've called his name a lot. The transfer from Colorado State has come to play today for the Akron D. Defensive coordinator Chuck Amato. He knows a lot of defense. He knows how to pressure. Been around the game a long time. You're seeing, seeing some really good defensive calls right now. That just, Schofield just has to stay on his block there. Just, just got off the block. There's Chuck Amato looking on. Has to be pleased so far. Yes, he does. Should be. Defense is playing well. Second and 11 flags all over the place. There was some rocking on both sides of that line. Michigan's offense moving back. As we figure this out, what, what they're trying to do defensively is load that box and to stop the run. And they're daring Michigan to throw it. So far, it's worked out. Well start. Offense number 98. Five-yard penalty. The on remains second. That's on Devin Gardner moving back from center as we check in again with Lisa. You guys listening to C.J. James here on the sideline. I mean, the whole team is pretty cool, calm and collected here, pretty confident. But an assistant came up to C.J. James and said, good job trying to get to Devin Gardner. I know he's elusive. I know he's tough to get. He interrupted the assistant coach, and he said, no, 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 no. I am going to get to him before this day is done. So a pretty confident group over here. Well, the longer they're around, the more confidence they will have, Lisa. On second and 16, nice little dump off to Sott in the open field. And Fitz to Sott with a gigantic gain to the 48-yard line, a pickup of 27 as Toussaint finally caught by Mizell and Freeman. They ran that same play versus Notre Dame last week for a big game late in the game. It's just a little sideline wheel route. Simple one-two read. Quarterback gets sucked inside, makes it a nice, easy throw. Corner needs to stay outside there and turn that turn that play in. Play action on first down. Gardner looking for the home run ball. Nothing there. 
And now Devin Gardner able to run for good yardage, and he gets into Akron territory and out of bounds near the 40-yard line. A first down scramble by Devin Gardner. What a nifty run by the junior QB. Al Borges, after a good play, went for a shot play. Wanted a touchdown here. Covered it, Akron covered it well down the field, made it run. He, he's got a good swing in that ball right there. He needs to tuck it. Learn how to do that. Good, fast teams will strip that ball. It's a great point because Gardner had it well out from the body that entire time. First and 10 at the 41 and a timeout taken by Akron. Timeout. Akron. They're second. I think one of their problems, 30 Chuck, second time. they had 10 Correction. men on the field. Media timeout. So one extra guy needed to be on the field. We'll see if they get 11 when we return. Terry Bowden on the left and his defensive coordinator Chuck Amato on the right have to be pleased so far. Their defense holding up, but Michigan driving again at the 41 of Akron on first down and 10. Toussaint stumbling as he tried to make his cut and he'll lose yardage back near the 43 as we take a look at this Akron defense. Just attacking them on the interior line with the, young, the youth of Michigan. There's two sophomores and, fresh, and a freshman at the guards and center of Michigan. That's where they're attacking right now. Doing a great job of flying around and Kevin, they're playing man-to-man -man defense in the back end quite a bit. They've held Fitz Toussaint to just 16 yards on eight carries. Five of his eight carries have gone for negative yards today. Second and 11 at the 42. Over the middle. And a good completion for a first down inside the 30 to Jake Butt. Justin March on the tackle, but a freshman tight end. The true freshman that these Michigan coaches absolutely love. They love him. They had a nice game against Notre Dame. Has a very, very bright future at the tight end position, which is going to be a staple with this Michigan offense for years to come as Brady Hoke and Al Borges are trying to get it back to a smash mouth, run downhill team. They're not quite there yet. Takes a little bit of time, but they're getting closer. At the 28 of Akron, first down and 10. And the carry up the middle for Big freshman Derek Green, who takes it to the 26-yard line. He had 58 yards in the opening win over Central Michigan. Another true freshman that came in with an, a lot of expectation. Well, he's one of the highest recruits they've had under, under the Brady Hope regime, expecting great things from him in the future, now and in the future, trying to spoon feed him a little bit. Probably don't have a big playbook for him. That's why you're not seeing him much at this time. Homa the motion man on second down. And the catch by Homa, and he's got the first down to the 16-yard line. Flat, Michigan moving it now, Chuck. Flat routes are always safe throws, especially against man-to-man -man defense, which is what Ackman was in there. It was, a, it was a little pick play or a screen play to the back to the flat, and usually that, that's a wide-open throw and an easy throw to make. The 16-yard line, first down. More man coverage. Toussaint to the outside. Toussaint inside the five, stretching out, and he's just out of bounds shy of the goal line. Emmanuel Lardy on the tackle, but a flag down at the 20-yard line. Let's see if that was a hold. Holding, holding offense number 88 10 yard penalty repeat first down that's Jake Butt, the freshman tight end picks up the hold the growth of a tight end offensive line is learning how not to hold as you get get on in your career learning keep your hands inside you see the hand on the back those are tough because it's hard to keep your hand inside when your defender's turning his back to you just trying to be aggressive and he got caught. First down and 20 now at the 26. Gallon with a blocker. Gallon breaks a tackle. And Gallon all the way down to the 10 yard line. 16 back on first and 20 before Anthony Holmes could make the stop. 
Nice run fake with just a quick throw to the outside. Give it to your playmaker at the line of scrimmage. Let him make plays with his feet. Nice play fake. Get the defense flowing. The opposite way of the catch. Has some blockers in front. Good players always make the first guy miss, which is what Jeremy Gallon did. From the 10 yard line, second and four. Pistol now for Michigan. Gardner on the option. Ball is loose. Still on the turf. And Akron's got it. The Zips Devin come up Gardner with a huge turnover and take it away from Michigan. Red zone turnover. Any turnovers bad. But red zone especially. They got there and getting ready to score. At least get three points. This ball security is one thing that Devin Gardner has to work on when I watch film of him. Nordley Cappy knocking it out. Jamel Turner scooping it up. And for the first time this year, Michigan fails to score in the red zone. Looked like he was trying to tuck it. It just... Just got stripped out. Needs to tuck that ball when he's in traffic. Pull back at quarterback on first down for Akron. Wants the screen. Has Chisholm. And Chisholm out shy of the 30-yard line, a pickup of seven before Blake Kansas and Thomas Gordon could get there to make the stop. Good play call by Terry Bowden. A.J. Milwee, their offensive coordinator. This is a screen coming out from their own end zone. A staple in college football to get things rolling. The completion out to the 35-yard line. Durazio hangs on to the football and moves the chains. Gordon on the stop. Well, there's Brady Hoke in the last 46 red zone possessions. That's the first time Michigan has failed to score. Broke a streak that was the longest current streak in the FBS. And Devin Gardner on the phone talking about it right now. They've, they've been great in the red zone. One of the best in the country in the red zone. It's been off the charts, except for that one. Defensive coordinator Greg Masson is bringing more blitz. He has four-man rush here for the last play. He's bringing the blitz a little bit more. And Cole with another completion to the 45. Terrell Goodman down there in the arms of Jared Wilson. But another good gain of nine on first down. Just an easy pitch and catch slant play to the weak side of the defense where there's less defenders. Cole's doing a nice job. Good play calling here. Just getting the ball out of his hand quickly. Three straight completions for Cole on the drive. 7 of 13 overall on the day. Run down here. Used to be a waste down, but now it's a run down in college football. They'll throw it, and the throw is incomplete. Now, do you like the play, or would you have been the guy who wanted to see the run down? You, you, I, I think you'd run the ball there. I did not like that play call on second second short. In the olden days, you, you ran, you, you, you threw a bomb up there, but defenses have caught on to that. I think it's hard to get first downs at any level. If you have a second one, get the first down. Go for the first down and run the ball. Now you put a little pressure on yourself as an offense with this third and one. Third and one, third and one calls are tougher than you think. Crowd getting into it a little bit here at the big house. Chisholm has the first down. And Chisholm into Michigan territory at the 45-yard line. Slipped out of the Joe Bolden tackle. Eventually went down, but not before he got the first. That was a great call. They went back to the run and got it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, just an inside zone play. And Chisholm saw the opening to the right-hand side. Saw a soft spot there. Michigan was a gap short defensively. They did not have a defender there in that backside gap. Chisholm found it. Good eyes for a running back. Decent little chip block as well from Broderick Alexander on that right side. From the 45, first down. On first down, pull throws, and it's intercepted by Countess down the sideline. Countess to the 30. Countess nudged out of bounds by Pole with a touchdown.
touchdown saving tackle at the 20 yard line. Countess has a nose for the football. He just seems to be around all the tip passes lately, the last two weeks. There's another one. Just a high throw. You got to make that catch, though. You have two hands on the ball. There's where your tip drill and, and practice comes into play. Some guys just have a knack for being around the ball when it's in the air. And, and Countess is one of those players. Third interception in the last two games for Blake Countess. Only complaint he may hear is from Thomas Gordon, who he stepped in front of. <laughs> Stealing the pick from him. Gordon wanted one. From the 21st down through the hands of Gallon and incomplete. Well, last week, Blake Countess was a big deal on the defensive side of the football. His first career interception, and now his second, which sealed the deal for Michigan before a record crowd and now gets his third today. He's hot. On second down, Gardner over the middle, and it's off the hands of Funches and incomplete. Well, you're in a third and 10 again in, in the red zone, where you know, Michigan's been very, very good there. And now they're all of a sudden in a third and 10 situation. Just threw the ball a little bit behind Funches, just a little bit, just a physical mistake there. Keep your toe out in front of the target, and that's where the ball would go. You want to throw that ball at arm's length in front of the receiver there. Michigan two for four on third down. Gallon and Dilio at the top of the screen. And a man coverage again. Gardner throwing, and it's intercepted. Picked off by DeAndre Scott. And Scott takes it back to the 25-yard line, and Akron stops Michigan at the 20-yard line again. This is the sloppiness that Coach Brady Hoke was worried about. It's starting to happen now, for the, especially for the Michigan offense. That was just Devin Gardner waiting too long to throw the ball. He was waiting, waiting, waiting. And Gallon needs to come back to the ball and help help his quarterback out a little bit better than that. He may not get the completion, but try to keep the defender from intercepting it. Might have to strip the ball and become a defender for Jeremy Gallon. Become the defender and strip the ball. The red zone, the 20 on in. Michigan had scored every time before their last trip in the red zone in 46 straight and now two in a row they've been turned away that was man-to-man -man coverage at the 25 pole sets up the screen and that one overshot and countess was in the area a dangerous throw by kyle pole if we go back one more time to devin gardner and that interception they threw a moment ago talking upstairs and the most in the Big Ten, 19 interceptions last year for Michigan QBs, five thrown this year in three games. What Al Borges is telling him is, hey, you are out of rhythm on that pass play. Don't throw an out of rhythm pass. Those result in interceptions usually. And that's exactly what Al was telling him. Hey, if you're out of rhythm, scramble around and make a play or use your legs. Schism. Trying to be patient and find a hole. There's just not much there. Michigan has adjusted well to some early Chisholm success. Desmond Morgan in there to make the stop. Three straight turnovers in this game. The fumble, the Akron interception. Now the Michigan interception right back to Akron. They, they have him in a third long situation. Got him behind the chains. I have an empty set here. And they're not bringing any blitz, so they're trying to rely on four-man pressure here on defense. Hole to throw. Open at midfield and a gigantic gain to the 43-yard line. Zach DeRazio running free. And a first down, Jared Wilson on the stop, but a 31-yard gain. There just wasn't enough linebacker depth for Michigan there. They were too close to the line of scrimmage, which allowed the receiver to get right behind on the second level. Good rhythm throw by Pohl. You can see the rhythm there that Devin Gardner did not have rhythm. A 
the 44 Chisholm picking his way forward for five to the 39 tackle by Mario Ojemudia. Chisholm is a hard nose runner. I've been very impressed with him so far. Their workhorse so far in this football game has been Chisholm. Second down and five. Akron down just four. 340 to go until halftime. These are the down and distance situations you want to get in offensively. Your, your playbook expands when it's second medium. Four man rush again. Cole looking to the right side, and that pass is knocked away. Had Goodman for a moment, but Chuck, it looked like that ball caught a little more air than Pohl might have wanted it to and gave Jordan Lewis time to get there and close. It did, but that was a great throw. That was, a, that was an excellent throw on time. Goodman needs to make that play. He has leverage on the defender. Just strong hands to the football. That, that's a nice throw. I would grade, I would grade a plus on that throw for a quarterback. The true freshman Jordan Lewis. Now third and five at the 39. You see if they're in four down territory here and go for it on fourth down if they don't make this. Here comes pressure. Cole throws. Good grab out in the flat by Andrew Pratt and a first down to the 32. Raymond Taylor with the coverage for Michigan. When you bring pressure like Michigan did there, you're vulnerable to the outside. You're one on one to the outside with your cornerbacks. And usually you have soft coverage, meaning they're off the receiver. Just an easy pitch and catch. They took a chance on the blitz, but they gave up the hitch route for the first down. Chisholm in motion. Trying to find some running room for Connor Hundley. And Hundley spinning around to the 27-yard line. I think it's five hard yards there. Connor Hundley, the sophomore from Hamilton, Ohio. Brennan Byer on the stop. Lots of, pre lots of pressure again by the Michigan defense bringing the blitz, but they went to the weak side of the, away from the blitz. Got some positive yards. Good hard running. His running back's been impressive for Akron. Good mix here. They go to tight sets for Akron. Now they're spreading things out. Eighth play of the drive for Akron. And Cole going to scramble and slides down near the 24. It's about two yards shy of the first down. James Ross, the third, covering him up. Smart play by Paul. It's hard to figure where the first down marker is. You know, you think, oh, hey, go for it. But you're not sure where it is. It saves them a hit. And they're in a manageable third down short here. Again, see if they go for it on fourth down if they don't make it here. You're in Robert Stein's field goal range at this point. But you're also a team that's 4 and 34 since 2010. And there's going to be a little bit of discussion. And it looks like a timeout's going to be used, and it will be by Kyle Cole. It's a big play for Akron. Timeout. Akron. Their third and final timeout. Terry Bowden will be Media trying to find out. a good play for this one. Akron down by four. This is the Quicken Loans team. A team dedicated to providing clients with an amazing home loan experience. For three years in a row, J.D. Power & Associates has ranked Quick. Coming up, the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime with Dave Howard and... Coach DiNardo, first half analysis of this one, plus Nebraska off to a fast start against UCLA, and the Hoosiers in a tight one as well. Our Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report coming up. A third and one at the 23-yard line, and the give is to Connor Hundley. Very close, but I don't think he got the first down, Chuck. I don't think he did either. They went to a, a full house backfield with one receiver, a run-type formation. And I believe you should go for it. Show confidence in your football team. You know, you, a field goal obviously gets you within one, but hey, you're trying to build something here at Akron. Go for it. And that's what they're going to do. Nope, they've changed their mind at the last moment. The field goal unit is going to run onto the field. Going to have to hurry because the play clock is at three. They don't have any timeouts left. 
They're not going to get this off. The confusion is going to cost Akron yardage. Play of game. Offense number 48. Five yard penalty. The down remains four. But now you have to kick it. And then they're within range of kicking this. Maybe that was a plan all along. <laughs> but that that's a no no. You don't want to you don't want to do that. They made a 45 yarder earlier. Maybe they just liked that range because this is going to be a 45 yard try. It's like they'll place it down right in between the 45 and 46 yard try between the 35 and 36 yard lines. That's Coach Bowden. Just there's probably a lot of coaches talking on the headset, telling them what to do. Just got to make a quicker decision. So Stein from 45. Stein's kick with the distance and it hits the upright and is no good. There's the difference right there. Confusion costs some yardage. Media, timeout. One minute. It's, it's mistakes like this that come back and haunt you. And that five yards maybe costs Robert Stein and Akron the opportunity. Stein trying to will it through, but it won't go. Terry Bowden can't believe it. His team still down four. A missed field goal, and Terry Bowden, Chuck Long, is he questioning or second-guessing himself right now? Oh, sure. He had a lot of coaches in his, in his ear telling him what to do, and he just delayed the decision for him. Just got to go with your gut as a head football coach and it looked like they were going to go for it which I believe you should do you're you're in a young program trying to build something show some confidence in your guys any other circumstance if you've been there a while you kick the field goal but hey you're trying to build something go for it 10 play 48 yard drive for naught for the Akron Zips and now it's second down at the 28 for Michigan two timeouts left for the Wolverines as Gardner throws the pass deflected and it's intercepted again. Justin March off the deflection gets it back for Akron as Gardner's second pick off the hands of Devin Funches. They were playing, Akron was playing prevent defense, meaning they were only rushing three and dropping eight in the coverage there because it's late, late in the second half here, two minute drill. Always go in the locker room with a lead. If you have a lead, Going to the locker room. He just forced it into coverage there. I put that on Devin Gardner. So, so now a lot Akron. of bodies, a lot of bodies there, Kevin. Excuse me. Now Akron with no timeouts, Chuck, and 29 seconds at the 38-yard line. What's the goal of this offense right now? Well, just try to get three points at least. You know, you have a chance to get a field goal. You're not too far away from that. About 12 yards or so. Be ready to clock the ball if the clock's moving. At the 38. Pressure coming. Pole hit and throws too high on the sideline. Looking over there for Michael Trailer Bennett. Oja Mudia with the late pressure on pole. It's not about downs here, it's about time. It's about conserving, conserving time. That's a good throwaway by Pole. Smart play. Remember, you only have about 10 to 12 yards here to get in the field goal range. So you have to call plays according to that. On second down, pressure again. Hole overshoots Zach Durazio, and that pressure from Michigan really forcing Pole out of his comfort zone. Well, they're, they're throwing some deeper routes right now. Uh, they need to get the ball out of his hand like they were doing earlier. Some quick throws, again, to get it down to that manageable, get that field goal range first. That was a deeper cut. And it was actually a covered sack, or a coverage pressure, I should say. Pole 9 of 21 for 82 yards for Akron. The Zips with a third and 10 at the 38 of Michigan. No timeouts left for Akron. And 
that one well overthrown. So three plays and no yardage advance for Akron. And they're going to bring Robert Stein on, try a long field goal. Yeah, this is not a good, good series right there in place. You need to get some type of yardage back. But they're going to give it a shot. Now Stein, who had a nine straight field goal streak broken on that one that caromed off the upright a moment ago. This one from 50. Five yards would be a career long. He has a strong leg. As you as you have seen so far, just missed the one, didn't hook it enough. Good snap, good hold. That one's not going to be close. Had the distance, but well off to the left, and the accuracy off for Robert Stein. And Akron comes away empty on two straight possessions in Michigan territory after the field goal. And that's still a 7-3 ball game. Those are two series Coach Powell would like to have back. You know, not going for it on fourth down. Of course, the penalty because they had no timeouts. To push the kicker back. And then, and then getting no yardage when they had great field position. As I said, you got to think field goal first. Get the field goal range first. Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report coming up as Devin Gardner takes a knee. And Michigan and Brady Hope will go to the locker room with just a 7-3 lead over the Akron Zips. They came out of the locker room on fire, marched down the field, scored the touchdown, and since then, it's been rough going for the Michigan Wolverines. As the 12th ranked Wolverines have just a 7-3 lead at home over the Akron Zips at the half. And is brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance. Protect what matters most with an Auto Owners Insurance independent agent. Find yours at AutoOwnersInsurance.com. And by John Deere. The off-road just got roomier. The new Gator XUV 825i S4. Now with seating for four. Moments ago, that was John Beeline with the chance to direct the Michigan Marching Band here at halftime alongside Chuck Long. I'm Kevin Kugler. Did a very nice job. The band sounded great, <laughs> which gave the fans something to think about because a second quarter that most folks in the big house would just as soon forget, Chuck. Yeah, take, take your fans off of that second quarter. Very <laughs> sloppy second quarter for both sides of the ball, especially for the home team in Michigan. And you don't want that to happen. I'm sure Coach Brady Hoke is saying a few things at halftime right now to his football team. Well, let's take a look at the planter's first half highlights and it's a lot of turnovers both teams in that second quarter turning the ball over it's all about ball security especially at the quarterback position you have to know when to secure the football when to pull the trigger when not most of it's been out of rhythm passing here's a uh, Gardner just forcing it into coverage when there's too many guys around gotta be smart with the football so miss opportunities for Akron though they had field position they had a chance to even go ahead in the game Missed two field goals in that first half of 45 and 55 yards. And the turnovers for Michigan, three in that first half, not going to make Brady Hoke very happy. No, I'm sure he's, he's saying a few things at halftime that are not pleasant. And turnovers will always keep the other team in the game. And that's what's happening in, in the first half. And only 19 yards rushing on a day that Michigan wanted to emphasize the tailback run game. Give Akron some credit. They played good defense as well. Michigan getting ready. Second half is straight ahead. Wolverines with just a four-point lead at the break. BTN football today from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Akron and Michigan getting ready to start the second half. A 7-3 lead 
for Michigan as we check in downstairs. Lisa Byington's with the head coach of the Zips, Terry Bout. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Take me back to the fourth down play where you didn't go for it. Why going for the field goal was more important for you at that point? Well, we just felt like right now we've got a low-scoring game, and one more field goal puts us with one point. If we make both our field goals, we're winning the ball game right now, and we don't want to take it. We want to take a chance to put points on the board. This is a team that has won two games in the last th or three three games in the last three years, I should say. What was your message to this team in the locker room? You know, just go out, go go out there. You, all your life, you dreamed to play in Michigan in the Big House as a kid. That's what you want to do. Now go out and show what you want to do. Show how badly you want to play. And they're doing that. They're taking the, the game to to Michigan, creating turnovers. Now we just got to keep up for keep them from getting a big play and see if we can finish an offensive drive. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Terry Bowden's troops, Chuck Long feeling okay right now as we look at the Quicken Loans quarterback comparison. They've forced those two turnovers, at least to the interception route, and a fumble from Devin Gardner. Well, Devin Gardner started off very well, and, and then the second quarter he didn't do as well. I think he started off and then ended up about 4 of 11. Uh, but the interceptions are the big thing to look at. He, just, he, he was out of rhythm on both throws. He, he was forcing into coverage. He'll learn from that, I'm sure. Al Borges called them down at halftime. Hey, you made good decisions all the way up and all, so far this year. Just settle down. Look for them to move the pocket more with Devin Gardner in the second half. They haven't moved the pocket much, so look for that. And some quarterback run game with him. Look for those two adjustments at halftime. Stein will kick it off for Akron. And the short pooch kick at the 20-yard line. Dillio, he can run. Dilio brought down at the 27 yard line by Dylan Evans as Michigan in the first half started off on such a hot streak went right down the field got that touchdown on a six play 75 yard drive but then a punt a missed field goal a fumble an interception and an interception not the way you want to close after that opening touchdown. Yeah the last three there's <laughs> those are the no no's and Keep, keeps other teams in the game hanging around, which is what Akron's doing right now. From the 27, first down for Michigan. Gardner in that quarterback run game that Chuck just talked about, and he steps out at the 29-yard line. Malachi Freeman knocking him out of bounds. And Gardner started seven of eight, Chuck. Since that time, four for 11, two interceptions in the fumble. Well. Great start, as you said, Kevin. Bad second quarter, shake it off. He's the type of young man. He has a lot of pride in his game. Works on it very hard and diligently. He'll get better as the game goes, but good quarterbacks brush those quarters off. We've all had them. On second and eight, Gardner, all kinds of time. Looking over the middle and it's incomplete. J.U. Chesson, the intended receiver. Good coverage by Akron, Chuck, but no pressure at all. It just it was a full protection scheme, meaning there's only a two-man route. So they were protecting with everybody to give them time. It was a, Akron's playing good man-to-man -man coverage. Or the receiver, Michigan receivers are having a hard time getting off the, the defensive backs of Akron right now. And they have Michigan's offense out of rhythm in another third long situation. On third and nine, Gardner with time, and the pass incomplete. He looked for Gallon over the middle. What happened there between receiver and quarterback? Well, you see Jeremy Gallon pointing to the area he wanted to catch the ball in. Devin Gardner is just late with the football here. He's out of rhythm, I've been talking about. Here's a double hop there. See, he, he, he needed to get that ball a little quicker in that window. And the windows closed fast in college football. You have to hit it right on time. The double hitch got him in trouble, got him out of rhythm. Imani Davis after a terrific punt by Matt Weil all the way back inside the 20 yard line. Davis breaking two tackles. And Imani Davis able to get positive yardage to the 25 yard line where Akron will have their first possession of this third quarter. And in the first half, the Akron zips. They struggled a little bit early, had to punt their first two possessions, then got the short field and the field goal, then a punt, an interception, and maybe the best drive on that missed field goal, the 10-play, 47-yard drive that hit the upright on the field goal. Nice drive, but th those are where you need points. And as we alluded to, they had a chance to lead in this game right now. 
they made some better decisions within those drives. At the 25 first down. Chisholm breaks one tackle. Cannot slip through the second tackle. Thomas Gordon had him around the ankle. Frank Clark came to finish him off. I don't think you've seen much adjustment with Akron on either side of the football coming out of halftime. I think they were pleased with where they were at halftime. Just cut down on the mistakes, the interception, of course. But I don't think you can see much different. They came out running to the left side of their offensive line to start play one. How do they feel about the pace that they're playing right now? They're just playing clock ball right now. Just trying to eat some clock up. Not a fast pace. And second down for the sideline and a catch by Durazio for the first at the 41-yard line of Akron. Durazio changed his gloves, I think. He's, he's getting hot right now. <laughs> Catching the ball. That was a nice sideline throw by Paul. Nice ball. Staying in the pocket. Your sideline's your friend when you're a quarterback. Less defenders out there. Nice throw. Career high in attempts now for Kyle Pohl. 23rd attempt there on the completion to Durazio. At the 41, first down carry for Chisholm. And Chisholm. Trying to get to the outside and gets good yardage to the 47 yard line. That's a six yard pickup to the 47. Now coming up in just a few minutes, in fact, at 2 Eastern, the Spartans will take on Youngstown State on the BTN alternate channel and BTN to go. Go to btn.com slash game finder to find the game in your region. Akron wants to make sure they have the chalk in their hands last. You see Paul looking over. He's getting a play from Coach Bowden. He's going to give the play to his lineman. They know exactly what the Michigan defense is doing. Chisholm. And close to a first down, a half yard shy. Just nudging the ball into Michigan territory before Jabril Black could make the stop. When you're on the road against a team that's been great at home, you need to stay ahead of the chains. That's exactly what they're doing on this drive to a third short instead of a third long. Third down, less than a yard for the first, and leaping over is Connor Hundley, and he's going to have the first down Connor just across Hundley the Michigan 49-yard line. Very impressed with Acker's short yardage Hundley. offense, Hundley. which is why he should, Coach Bounce should lean towards possibly going for on some fourth and shorts in this football game. They are very good in their short yardage offense. Eight yard line, first down and ten. Delayed handoff and a good tackle made by James Ross the third. He was being blocked, Chuck, and he was still able to make that stop of Connor Hundley. That was a great play by Ross because they had an open, they had some open grass on the left side of the line there, and Ross came, got off the block and made a nice play there. If he doesn't make the play, they're going to go for about 15 yards. It's the fourth straight Akron possession that's made it into Michigan territory. That's his zone coverage right now with Michigan. Second and nine at the 47 yard line. High catch for Durazio, and he's reaching out and very close to the first down, and will depend on the spot. Morgan and Countess on the stop. And it is a first down for Akron. Nice, nice combination here of between Paul and Durazio. See, the last time they won on the road, October 18 of 2008, a 27-game losing streak. Not all that under Coach Bowden. But a program that since 2010 is just 4 and 34. Three 1 and 11 seasons in a row. And Coach Bowden's going to turn this program around. He has a great staff. He knows how to win. It's going to happen. It's going to take a little time. Pressure coming. Lobbing it for the sideline, and a flag is thrown. Raymond Taylor in coverage against L.T. Smith, and the flag thrown at the 20-yard line. Probably face guarding by Taylor. When the ball's in the air and you're in man coverage with your back to the football, you have to turn your head. Pass interference. Defense number six, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. It was right here. He probably didn't turn his head. He, you have to turn your head and find the ball 
or the referee will call it every time. See, he did not turn his head there when the ball was in the air. And that's always a pass interference, plus he had contact at the same time. They had to determine if that was a catchable ball or not, which it was. It, it would have been a catchable ball. And now Akron at the 23 of Michigan has a first down. The Akron Zips try to take the lead on Michigan in the third quarter on the road. And movement on the right side of the offensive lines and El Damasa. False start. Offense number 52. Five-yard penalty. The down remains first. That was a long cadence, Kevin. And what happens when you have a long cadence? Linemen stay in their stance too long, and they get edgy. They, they get antsy. They want to get going. You got to be careful about how long you keep your linemen in that stance. First down and 15 at the 28. Pull over the middle. DeRazio's got it at the 5. Akron takes the lead. They spread out the defense and exploited the middle of the field against their man coverage. A nice little shake route by Durazio. And he and Paul are on fire right now. No pressure there by the defensive front. We saw DeRazio with problems handling the ball early. Michigan fans are wishing he'd catch that bug again. Because the Akron Zips have just taken the lead over the 12th ranked Wolverines here in the third quarter. And the extra point by Robert Stein is good. So Kyle Pohl, the sophomore with a sprained ankle, has been able to come up and engineer a lead with a pass to DeRazio. Into the end zone he goes. And Akron and Kyle Pohl excited with a three-point lead on the road. The Akron Zips have a 10-7 lead. Our Cadillac scoring drive for Akron. Seven plays, 75 yards, 353 off the clock. And Terry Bowden's Akron Zips have just put a score on the board that is rippling across the country right now. Great drive and a, and a good finish in the, in the red zone. Ilio at the 20-yard line. Across the 30. Looking for an answer. And knocked out of bounds across the 40-yard line. Great field position for Michigan as Bryce Cheek knocked him out. Here's the play right here on Bolden. It's a little shake route. DeRazio is going to come down and shake him, get him committed one way, and then he's going to work the other way with a lot of open grass in the middle. See the shake? Inside route, no one, no, no one else there. Tough on the linebacker, puts his head down and scores. Great execution. So now what do you want to see from Michigan here, Chuck, to come back with an answer? Well, they, they need to get Devin Gardner more involved in this game by moving the pocket a little bit more. As Fitz Toussaint trying to find some room. Toussaint into Akron territory and out of bounds inside the 35 at the 33-yard line, but a flag is down back at the 45. It's be a holding on Michigan. And I believe it came from the wide receiver position. Holding offense number 21, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That's Jeremy Gallon. You're exactly right, Chuck. See it here. Okay, it's tough blocking when there's man press coverage. You cannot hold. Get your arm inside instead of outside. You see the hold right there at the end. Just grab the jersey. Didn't allow that cornerback to get out and make a play or have a chance at a play. Negates a good gain from Toussaint. Those are tough blocks to sustain the whole time. Back at the 18, or the 36-yard line, first and 18 now for Michigan. Toussaint with a huge hole again. Fitz Toussaint down the sideline and just caught inside the 40 by Anthony Holmes, who saved the touchdown. What happens when you play a lot of man-to-man -man defense, your back is to the ball, covering wide receivers. So if you penetrate, get through the line of scrimmage, which is what Michigan did, there's no one there's no one there to make a play because the defensive backs are running with their back to the ball. 
good game saving tackle or touchdown saving tackle. 24 yard run by Toussaint and a first down. Toussaint again hole up the middle closed with Nick Rossi there to make the stop at the 36 yard line and back downstairs we go to Lisa Kevin I've noticed two sides of Devin Gardner one the one that we all know outgoing after that first series after they scored the touchdown he was interacting with his wide receiver since the two picks he's really kind of kept to himself reserved and focused I guess would be the description I would use to describe him and watching him from the sideline reserved and focused maybe on this drive to start the second half trying to get this Michigan offense going downhill against this Akron squad. On the zone read, the keep by Gardner. And Gardner with some daylight. And Gardner puts Michigan back on top. There's your halftime adjustment, Kevin. Get the ball in Devin Gardner's hands on the quarterback lead game. He's just too dangerous a weapon not to have that happen, not to call enough of those. It's a career long for Devin Gardner. Had a 35-yarder last week against Notre Dame, 36 on that carry as the extra point from Brendan Gibbons is good. And what an answer, engineered by number 98 as he puts it in his own hands. And Devin Gardner able to put it on the board and give Michigan the four-point lead. We're about a minute away from kickoff. Spartans and Youngstown State on the BTN alternate channel at BTN to go. Go to btn.com slash game finder to find a game in your region. Big answer here at the big house from Michigan. Down 10-7 to Akron. They march right back down the field. Devin Gardner puts it in the end zone. And now Trailer Bennett trying to get good field position for Akron down at the 22-yard line. Let's take another look at the Devin Gardner 36-yard run. Okay, he's reading this end right here. The end stays outside. Okay, then he's going to take tuck the ball inside and make a run. He gets to the outside where there's less defenders. That's what you teach your quarterback to do in the run game where it's safer. Great play by Devin Gardner. Great call by Al Borges. Get back to the quarterback run game. Eighth straight game that Devin Gardner's accounted for at least two touchdowns. That one with a career long 36 yard run. And now it's up to this Michigan defense going back to work against Akron. Pressure coming. Chisholm cannot pull it in. He's the fourth leading active running back receiver leader in the MAC. So he's got good hands out of the backfield, but he couldn't catch that one. Good, good throw. A little high throw there, trying to get to the flat against a blitzing Michigan defense. They complete that. He has some yardage in front. Greg Madison, the defensive coordinator, is bringing some heat to start this second half. He's showing it again here. Second down and 10. Quick slant, incomplete. Trying to hit Bickley, and he couldn't pull it in. Now third down. Smart play call there. Just a little slant route against a blitzing Michigan defense. They were in man coverage all over the field. Just a little cross route. Got to come up and make that play. Get yourself in a manageable third down. Right where the Michigan defense wants you. Third and long. Terry Bowden trying to find a third and ten play against Michigan in the big house. Not an easy task. Blitz up the middle. And caught and down immediately at the 28 is Andrew Pratt. Good open field tackle by Jordan Lewis. Offense drives and scores a touchdown. Defense pitches a three and out. Good answers for Michigan. Great answer. And they, Greg Madison, defensive corner, again brought the blitz. He brought the blitz all three plays there. So that's been their defensive halftime adjustment. We're not getting any pressure with four. We have to bring some heat. Three in a row for Greg Madison. Zach Paul to punt, Norfleet back. Paul a line drive punt. Norfleet gonna let that one bounce. 
And it'll be down at the 14-yard line. So the Wolverines going to start deep in their own end. 7-14 remaining in the third. Michigan with a four-point lead. Media timeout. timeout. If these Kevin Kugler, Chuck Long, Lisa Byington, our entire BTN crew back at the big house in Ann Arbor. Has momentum shifted here over the last five minutes in Michigan's favor? Oh, definitely. Two good answers on offense and defense. And this is a game of momentum. Every game's that way, and certainly in Michigan's favor. They still need to capitalize on that, though. They still need a good drive here. At least a drive. Starting at their own 14-yard line. Fumbled. Gardner in trouble, and Gardner going nowhere. Not a good start. Back at the 8-yard line, a loss of 6. Jamel Turner, the first to get to Devin Gardner. Let's see what happened here. Snaps good. Just slips out of his hand at the mesh point. The way Akron's front seven has swarmed today it didn't take them long to get there they are getting after it in the front four and they they have a, a nice bead on the Michigan cadence coming off the ball well Gardner on the keep huge hole Gardner to the 25 Gardner to the 35 and out of bounds across the 40 yard line Devin Gardner all the way out to the 43 yard line a pickup of 35 and a first down and let's check in with Dave Revson in Chicago for a studio update. Hey Kevin just a quick reminder for those looking for the Michigan State game it is underway Spartans in Youngstown State you can find it on an alternate channel just check btn.com slash game finder for the channel in your area. All right, Dave, thank you very much. Another big play moments ago from Michigan. They came in leading the Big Ten with plays over 30 yards this year. Now 12 for Michigan. And Akron has allowed big play prop. That's been a problem of theirs. Chuck Amato called it their nemesis. Big plays allowed on the defensive side. Well, I think they, they last week they had like eight plays or so, 200 over 200 yards total. That was the big focus for Coach Amato coming this game is not giving up the big play. That's what really kills you defensively is, is field position of big plays that happen on your defense. So far, so good for him. Just a couple. Second and seven at the 46. Gardner in some trouble. Had to get rid of it in a hurry. Not biting at all was Dylan Evans on that play fake. He played his position very well. I believe that the Michigan offense right now is better in the shotgun today than they are under center. They're trying to develop an under center run game with some play action off of that. And they hit a few last week on Notre Dame. But today it's been more shotgun and under center that they've been good at. Here they, here they are back to the gun. Eight straight incompletions since the first half for Devin Gardner. Third and seven at the 46. Four man rush from Akron. And the pass is complete and it's a first down. No, they're going to say it's picked off. Are they going to call it for Akron? Akron saying they have the football. The official saying no, that was a catch by Gallon. Malachi Freeman trying to claim it belonged to the Zips. It's a first down instead for Michigan. Just a simple curl throw to the outside here. Hey, you're just going down 10 yards, turn around, come back to the football. Ty will go to the receiver. Looks like that's a tie. Good job by Gallant, just hanging on to the ball, squeezing it. Come down, tie goes to the receiver. That's a catch. From the 46 on first down. Nowhere to go that time. A yard is all for Toussaint Rossi on the tackle for Akron. Michigan has two different offenses going right now. Again, they're getting under center, get some downhill run game with Toussaint, and they're getting in the gun and working some quarterback run game with Gardner. It's kind of the mix they're having right now, and then passing game off of that. Good possession so far. Remember, started at the 15-yard line. Michigan down to the Akron 45 with a second and nine. Gardner finds his tight end, Jake Butt. And Butt 
with three zips on top of him finally goes down at the 31 yard line Emmanuel Lardy the first guy there but that's asking a lot from Lardy to bring down big Jake Butt by himself Devin Gardner his comfort zone right now is throwing footballs near the hash mark or outside the hash that's where he's feeling more comfortable throwing the football than over the middle He's been in rhythm and timing in each one of those throws, as opposed to his over-the-middle throws so far in this game. Toussaint in trouble, dropped in the backfield. C.J. James, also Keontae Hollis in there on the stop. Very impressed with their inside interior defense. Our United States Marine Corps leader of the game, Taylor Lewan. Team captain visits Mott Children's Hospital Weekly. Told us yesterday he's got a new pet. Picked up a stray dog three days ago. Named him Brew. Said, what kind of dog is he? He said, he's purebred mutt. <laughs> Replacing the pet pig that didn't work out too well in the Luan household. They had to get rid of him after a couple of weeks. Gardner to throw over the middle. Catch is made. Looking for first down yardage. And more down the sideline and into the end zone for the touchdown. Chesson. There's your under center play action pass off the run game. Throwing the ball right on the hash mark where the comfort zone, that's where the comfort zone for Devin Gardner is right now. Do it on time. Sloppy tackling there by Coach Amato's defense. I know he's not going to be happy about that. First career touchdown for the redshirt freshman J.U. Chesson. As he puts Michigan up now 21 to 10. 14 unanswered points for Michigan after they fell behind 10-7. And Chesson with his first career touchdown gives him a 21 to 10 lead here in the third. Two great answers right now offensively. Last two drives. After a sluggish second quarter and then coming out of halftime, just a little play action. Here's your hash throw right now. That's where Devin Gardner feels very comfortable. He's got to make the tackle right there. Just good job of staying with the play, keeping your feet moving, having a nose for the end zone. Albert Presley had a chance to make a stop as well and ended up just pushing Chesson a little bit closer to the end zone. And the Cadillac scoring drive for Michigan, it happened quickly. Nine plays, 86 yards, 351. And talk about answers, about the worst thing Akron could do today was take the lead. Since then, Michigan's gotten a defensive stop and back-to-back -back touchdowns. I like Devin Gardner's poise, his resiliency. He's sitting on the bench alone. Hey, everybody leave me alone. I got, I got, I'll get you back in this game. Love the way he's handled himself after the rough second quarter. Well, the big play storyline that was so prominent between these two, Akron gives them up and Michigan gets them a lot. Two plays of 30 yards or more on that drive. 13 now on the year for Michigan to lead the Big Ten, and it continues to be the nemesis of Akron and defensive coordinator Chuck Amato as Gardner. Three for three, 54 yards in the touchdown. Now Terry Bowden's got to do a little work. What does he do here to try to get his team back on track they're reeling right now well they are but there's plenty of time in the game and you're not down by that much stay with your same game plan little run pass mix they're going from tight sets to spread out sets just keep the mix and keep and, and use some clock on first down to Razio who had the touchdown that gave Akron the lead at 10 to 7 picks up 9 to the 34 before Blake Countess can make the stop. What a great combination between Paul and Durazio today. And it didn't start off well. Durazio came in at quarterback for a play, had the snap fumbled as it almost went over his head. Hundley the carry on second and one. He's got the first down and more. And Hundley pinballing down to the 42-yard line. Defensive coordinator Greg Madison is doing is calling this game in series. Last series he's blitzing. This series he's not. It's all by series right now with Greg Madison trying to keep a good mix against this offense. Coach Madison really enjoyed talking with him yesterday. 
and the challenges of coaching a young defense. Great coach, no question. 42-yard line, first down. Good play action from Pole. And he has to throw it away because Mario Ojemudia was not at all fooled by the play fake. I think the hardest job in college football now, next to the head coach, is defensive coordinator. All the things you have to have, you see with the spread, now with the tempo offenses out there, you have to get guys lined up. It is the most difficult job in college football today, and he's done a great job of adjusting over the years in, in his coaching career. Well, you've got two veteran defensive coordinators, Chuck Amato, doing work on the other side. Right. Fun to watch these two veterans with their charges on the sidelines. Second and 10 at the 42. They set up the quick screen, but Michigan all over it. Nowhere to go for D. Fryson. He'll lose yardage back to the 38. James Ross, the third, who's had a very nice game for Michigan. It's a nice defensive stop on a, on a slip screen. Those usually go for zero or big plays. Just both of the yep. coordinators getting work done. Two veteran guys, great coaches. Tasted a lot of success each of them have in their careers. Third down and 14 for Akron. Be careful at quarterback. Hundley just trying to get a little yardage here. Gets to the 40-yard line, and that's all. Michigan closing the door quickly. Brendan Beyer, first man to reach Hundley. And the punt team is going to come on for Akron. Michigan's defense rising to the challenge once again in the last two-thirds of this third quarter, but very strong for Michigan. Yeah, very strong answer so far. That, that was not a bad call by, by Coach Bowden. You, you got third and extra long. Hey, you can always punt and play defense. Michigan has answered offensively twice, but they've been prone to mistakes all game, too. So that's not a bad call. You don't want your quarterback to throw a costly interception there. Paul to punt it away to Dilio. At the 21. Dilio down at the 28-yard line. Seven-yard return for Dilio and Devin Gardner and company making their way back out. Been a little bit of everything today. Some good and some bad for Devin Gardner. It has, but he's starting to find a little rhythm now. And he's, he's having better ball security. And they're doing a good job of keeping the ball a little bit outside of the middle. You see all his interceptions have been down the middle so far in this game. And then they get back to the quarterback run game, which is a big staple in their offense. Coach Borges did not want to run him more than 10 times in this game. Thought he ran him too much last game. Toussaint with the carry on first down and fits Toussaint a yard to the 30-yard line. C.J. Mizell came in from Washington State via junior college. And you see that a lot on this Akron squad. Coach Bowden's gone out and found some guys who were Division I players but have had to transfer for a variety of reasons. A lot of programs do that now. They're trying to turn it around. There's, there's players all over the country that are not happy where they're at or they're not getting playing time. They want a chance to play or got beat out by a younger player, and they want to go play somewhere. And, he's, and, and these guys have found a home with uh, Coach Bowden in Akron. They're going to do a good job at this, in this program. Well, that's going to be the final play of the third quarter here in Ann Arbor as Devin Gardner and the offense will that's head the to the, the sidelines. Third quarter. Terry Bowden trying to get his team fired up, but too much number 98 in that third quarter for his liking as Devin Gardner rallies the team from 10-7 down to a 21-10 lead. An early lead in the third for Akron, but Michigan's had the answer. They lead by 11 after three. If you had looked at that same crowd about midway through the third quarter, they wouldn't have been quite as happy as they are right now. Things have turned in a hurry for Michigan. Down 10-7 in the third, now up 21-10. And looking for more with a second and nine from their 30-yard line. And Gardner looking deep over the middle for Gallon. And the pass incomplete. Anthony Holmes trying to make the diving attempt at a pick. And it's third down. Very dangerous throw against man coverage. It was a four vertical route. And they had man coverage, which is hard to complete those with a defender right on the back of the, the receiver. And then you have the free safety coming over the top that almost made the play. You have to be careful with those. 
Big third long call here. Pressure coming. And it's intercepted down the sidelines, and nobody's going to stop Justin March as he takes it in for six. What great hands by March. Snagging that football on a screen pass, which is very difficult to do because it's such a short throw. He must have been a tight end or receiver in high school, maybe. <laughs> that was a great football play. And March has stunned the crowd in the big house with his 27 yard return. What happens on screen passes is you don't have a lot of time to decipher the, the rush as a quarterback. So you feel like you have leverage with the throw. Marsh has made an outstanding play. Extra point is good. And with 14.46 to play in the game, Chuck Long Akron is down just four to Michigan on the road. That's why Terry Bowden chose to run the draw play on third and long because he knows his deep. That's a nice play. It's hard for quarterbacks to find all the defenders on screen passes. That's one of the hardest things to do, and he had pressure in his face. He just didn't see March well enough. Four, Great play by March. Four Great tackles hands. today, two interceptions for March, one tackle for loss. And Michigan fans hoping that their team can get it figured out. Turnovers are a big equalizer, Chuck. Four of them today for Michigan. Always is. And they're doing it at home, which is very rare. Well, it was the problem that bit Brady Hoke's squad last year. They came in with a turnover in 22 straight games, and in the five losses that Michigan had last season, 18 turnovers in those five games. And they were even coming into this game, so they had gotten better in that department. But that's all gone by the wayside now. And Justin March's interception return for the touchdown has put Akron right back in this ballgame. Norfleet backing up as the kickoff's in the end zone. He'll take a knee and take the touchback. Let's check in downstairs with Lisa Byington. Kevin Brady Hoke was very curious about how his team would respond mentally to this game, to this approach. He told me on the field in the pregame that he has to ask his players coming off that emotional win against Notre Dame, are you satisfied with the all-time attendance record and just beating Notre Dame, or do we have higher goals? He had to remind this team all week that champions come to play every single time. Still has a young football team, Kevin. It's the hardest. Those are the hardest teams to coach. You have to be with them every second that you get. Gardner inside, fighting for yardage down to the 28-yard line. Mizell and McCray on the stop. And last week against Notre Dame, this place was rocking from start to finish. The largest crowd to ever see a football game, 115,109. It was the 400th all-time win at Michigan Stadium. And I know people say, well, there's only 12, maybe 13 games a year. How can you not get up for them? But you can't get up for every game like that game. Hard to do. Very difficult to do. Just try and stay on an even keel all the way throughout the year. Gardner under pressure. Trying to get rid of the football. And he's not going to get away. It's sacked back at the 15-yard line. Rossi was there. Mizell was there. The pressure intense on Devin Gardner. And it's third and long. Coach Amato brought some heat there. Bringing some pressure. Playing some hand-to-man -man coverage again. Nowhere to go with football. Devin has got to squeeze that ball, which he did. That is a plus that he did that. Instead of that ball dropping on the ground, he ate it and got on the ground. Great defense call by Chuck Amato. Got him in a third and extra long. Here's where you have to be careful now. He's been struggling with turnovers. Tough play call for Al Borges here. Dilio the motion man on third down. Gardner. Nobody open. Going to have to run. Gardner trying to get to the sticks. He'll be well short of the 30-yard line. He needed the 35. Jamel Turner on the stop. Excellent coverage by Akron, and they force a Michigan punt, and there's an injured Wolverine back down at the 15-yard line. Fixes timeout for an injured Michigan player. It's Taylor Lewan. Don't want him to get hurt. Don't want anybody to get hurt, but he's their leader. 
on offense has a great future at the next level. And this place is silent right now. And I think everybody understands the significance of the man down on the field right now for Michigan. Certainly that man does, Brady Hoke, as he goes out to talk with his leader who has been uh, yeah, working yeah. exceptionally yep. hard to get himself ready for this season and for next year. All right, here he is right here. Let's see what happens to him. Mm. Right there, you see it just get chopped down on his knee or ankle. Lyman wear those big knee braces, which really helped them. It was Moses McCray who came in from Florida State. Okay, those knee braces say have saved a lot of linemen. No, that's a great no. sign. Needs to get one on. He has one on the left, he needs one on the right. <laughs> Boy, that is great news as Jake Ryan was out there to meet him. Tremendous defensive leader and team leader is expected to come back in about a month. Here's Jake as he walks off. You know he'd like to be out right. there with his team. Another great leader for him that they're missing from a leadership leadership standpoint. They'll have him back in October. Meanwhile, Michigan's punt team on. Imani Davis back at the Akron 29-yard line. Zips down just four. They got the stand they needed from their defense. And now Michigan will punt it away. Pressure up the middle. Just got rid of that one. Davis at the 37, spinning around to the 39-yard line. And that one almost blocked by Albert Presley, who came in there and just missed the Matt Wild punt. One last look. Wild just got it rid of it. And Akron with the football down by four. Albert Presley just missed a blocked punt before the timeout. Here's a look at it right here. We'll freeze it. It's too straight up. He needs to get his arms out like this to take the ball off the off the toe instead of too high like he did. And now on the first down, Pratt with the catch to midfield and a first down for Akron. Ramon Taylor on the coverage and Akron down four with the football. 12:45 to play in Ann Arbor. They haven't thrown the ball much to Pratt, but he's been their big play receiver so far this year. Little slant route, get the ball out of your hand. Good call. First down and 10. Kyle Pohl, the sophomore quarterback. Trying to engineer a comeback on the road. And the pass incomplete. Trying for Pratt again. Taylor once more with the coverage. And speaking of Taylor, Taylor Lewan went off with an injury. Lisa's got an update. Yeah, Kevin, he's actually still sitting with the first team offensive line and talking to the head athletic trainer at Michigan, Paul Schmidt. He does expect him to return to the game the second that this offense is back here on the field. Well, that is terrific news, Lisa. A guy that arguably one of the most valuable offensive linemen, not only for Michigan, but in the entire Big Ten Conference. Second and ten at midfield. Looking deep down the right sideline. A leaping attempt, and he's got it inside the ten. What a grab by L.T. Smith. It's first and goal, Akron. Just a great throw to the outside shoulder, Smith, by Paul. He is really in rhythm and in a groove right now. Just a simple go route. Little stutter move by Smith. The freeze of the cornerback and laid out for the catch. Receiver, receiving coaches love to see that when, they, when those guys lay out for catches. Great individual effort. Excellent throw to the outside. Crowd trying to get involved as Chisholm has the carry on first down. Inside the five and Chisholm down near the two-yard line. Good. Ross and Wilson on the stop. Good change of pace in the run game. They've been running left most of the day. 
They mix it up and run to the right side at the right time here in the red zone. Get a nice gain out of it. Just a good mix of, of play calling right now by Terry Bowden. Momentum has switched back and forth in the second half. Michigan had a 21 to 10 lead, but the interception and the touchdown have turned things around. Justin March had that play, and now Akron knocking on the door, trying to grab the lead again. Full house backfield. Second and goal from the two. Cole with the play fake, and he throws the interception. Picked off in the end zone, and down is Jared Wilson. Uh, just crushing for an offensive coach when that happens. There's a little pop pass, little play, play, dive fake, and you got to get your eyes up fast as a quarterback and find those defenders before you throw it. When in doubt, always throw to the back two yards of the end zone. That's the safe throw. He just didn't have it. He didn't have enough loft on the football. Get it to the back two yards of the end zone. Defenses do not cover that. Just threw it too low. It is hard to find all defenders on those plays. So you have to, again, when in doubt, go to the back of the end zone. Our ball or nobody's ball is how we say it offensively. First pick for Wilson. Great time for it for Michigan. From the 20 on first down. And a big run up the middle. For another first from Fitz Tucson, he gets 16 yards. Emmanuel Lardy on the stop. I like the way Al Borges is calling this run game. He is forcing the issue with Tucson up the middle. When they had, when they they struggle with it for a big part of the day, but he's staying with it. Got a nice game there. Being patient with your play calling. Tucson on first down. Not much running room there as Mizell knifing in to make the stop at the 38. Akron's going to look back on this game if they end up falling short, missing out on some opportunities as Al Borges is trying to throw a knockout punch here in the fourth quarter. High atop Michigan Stadium calling the plays. Loves the game. Watches the pro game more than anything for schemes and things to bring to his system. Been at a long time. You coaches steal from everybody. <laughs> Offensive coaches especially. Trying to find room up the middle. Toussaint goes nowhere. Moses McCray was there to stack him up, and it'll bring up a third down and long. Now that's three plays in a row that Coach Borges has called with right down the middle. Just trying to establish timeout. a physicality with his offensive line against with a young offensive line inside without Taylor. Got helmets stuck together here. Taylor Lewan yep. and Cody Grice have their helmets stuck together. It's like NASCAR. They're trading paint. I'd like to see them run the ball over Taylor a little bit more, especially late in the game. You go, you go to your horses. You go to your guys late in the game that are the leaders and been there a while to see how that. That plays out. Jeremy Jackson, the motion man on third and nine at the 37. Gardner's throw caught by Gallon at the 45, a yard short of the first down. Malachi Freeman with the tackle. He needed the 46, one yard away, and the punt team will come on. Akron came with the heat there, a full blitz. Devin Gardner did a nice job of standing in there and pressure through a little bit behind because of the pressure. Well, we heard a few grumbles coming from the crowd when the punt team came on, but this is absolutely the right call. Yes, it is. Wild with a wobbly punt. That's not going to make them happy here at Michigan not Stadium. As Akron is going to have very good field position at the 33, down by four. Football on BTN is brought to you by... State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. Beautiful Ann Arbor, Michigan. What a day and uh, what an interesting event we have unfolding at Michigan Stadium. The Wolverines with just a four-point lead. Akron with the football. First down and ten. And Chisholm 
out to the 38 yard line on first down a pickup of five yards and that's been something that when they've run Chuck on first down Chisholm's usually gotten them four to five to six yards. They're running to their senior offensive lineman on the left side. They're both guard and tackle are seniors and they're working that left side going back to their bread and butter side that they started the game off with. Second down and five at the 38. Chisholm to the right side and to the 40-yard line, three yards away from the first. Ojemudia on the tackle for Michigan, and now a big third down with 8-12 to play. Staying with the same game, game plan Terry Bowden is, and that's smart. He's got a good mix right now. He's gaining yardage during a manageable third down. Michigan in this series has not blitzed. Back to a four-man rush. 27 straight losses on the road for Akron, down four in the fourth. Third and three. And a first down to the 47-yard line. Tackle made by Lewis. Goodman on the catch and move the chains. Nice safe throw by Pohl, keeping it low, too. He knows the throw is going to make the first down, make it a nice catchable ball, protect your receiver from the hit. You coach your kids to throw it a little bit lower, even if they have to get on their knees to catch it. Smart throw. Kyle Pohl career highs in attempts, completions, and yards. Adds another completion to the mix. Broken tackle by Hundley. And Hundley able to get positive yardage to midfield. Thomas Gordon with a big stick at the end of the play. Gordon can bring it. You don't see many missed tackles from Michigan in watching their tape as compared to other teams. There was a rare missed tackle there off the screen pass. You don't see much with Michigan defenders. They tackle well and they practice it more than a lot of teams. Showing blitz. Looking over to Coach Bowden. He's going to give him a new play because Coach Bowden has already seen the blitz. Second down and seven. Play clock at two. Pole lofting it down the sideline and it's incomplete trying to find Andrew Pratt good coverage from Raymond Taylor was all over Andrew Pratt looks like there was miscommunication between uh, quarterback and receiver Paul and Pratt he just threw it away looked like he thought he's going to run a different route Akron six of 14 on third down today Pretty decent percentage against the, against this Michigan defense. Third and seven here. Crowd really into it right now. Man press coverage. Nose to nose with their defenders. Four man rush. Pole with time. Nobody open. Pole gonna tuck. Pole trying to reach for the first down and he's very close. The Akron bench thinks he has it. That's great effort by Paul. Excellent quarterback effort. Not on a bad wheel. He's been hurt. There he is in the pocket. Man coverage. Everybody has it back to the quarterback, so he's got space. Good stiff arm. Tuck the ball. Squeeze it. Get the first down. Great effort. Slipped just past Delonte Hollowell to get that last yard. And now first and 10 at the Michigan 43. And the carry for D.J. Jones, the freshman back, down to the 41, just a couple. Jared Wilson with the tackle. Clock running under six minutes now remaining here in Ann Arbor. Spread things out here for Akron. And going to the run game from a spread formation. You saw the goal, the end zone for Akron. And what would be one of the biggest wins of this college football season, but a bunch of Michigan defenders standing in the way of Terry Bowden's zips. Using clock here, trying to use it all the play clock. Second and eight. Pole looking down the right sideline. Got a man open inside the five and a touchdown. L.T. Smith gives Akron the lead with 523 to play. Same throw as we saw in the last series. They found a weakness, or a strength, I should say, with Smith. He just ran right by the corner. And the thing about long passes, it's like getting a birdie in golf. They get you right. They get your, get your back on track quickly. 
Now they're going to look at this one because the question is, was he in? The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a touchdown. They're going to look to see Chuck, I think, if his knee hit before he got across the goal line. Taylor, the corner, just got flat-footed for some reason. Left to see the was a perfect throw. We call that we call that the bucket throw. Keep it away from where the defender has a chance to reach his arm in and knock it away. Threw it right in the bucket. Looks like the knee. Where's the ball when the knee is down? Looks like right. it would looked a little short, Chuck. This will show us. This show right here. Knees down, right there. So yes, he will be down before the ball breaks the plane. That's what it looked like. Yep, be a, should be down at the one yard line. That's a great, great throw and catch though. It looks like he's down before the ball breaks the plane. The ball has to break the plane before the knee goes down. As the further review, the runner was down at the one yard line. It'll be first and goal at the one yard line. Akron. All right, so take the lead off the board for now. And we've seen this before. Remember, Akron was on the two yard line and threw an interception in the end zone. So this is a possibility, potential for Michigan to get a stop, but they've got a lot of work to do with Akron four tries from the one. This is a run down. Do not throw the football here. Run the football. They have been good on short yardage offense. From the one on first down, nowhere to go for Connor Hunley. He went up and Michigan met him in the air and it's second and goal. <laughs> It all depends on how you feel about your defense right now against Michigan's offense, whether to go for it, use all four downs to get it in, or kick the field goal and get it to a one-point game. They're talking defensively over there on the sideline. Second and goal from the two. Hunley again with the carry, and Hunley fighting inside the one, but he won't get there. Matthew Godin. The big sophomore from right here in the state of Michigan with the tackle, and now it's third and goal with the one. What do you do here? Here's where you throw a pass. Hard play action fake and throw a pass. And keep it on the outside if you can. You still have all your timeouts left. Timeout. Accurate. Their first timeout. Until right seconds. there. <laughs> But not a bad time, is it, for a timeout? This is a huge play. This obviously. is a huge play. It just depends on how you feel about your defense right now. Because a field goal, if you don't make it here, a field goal gets you within one. You have a chance to win it at the end of the game with a field goal. If you're feeling good about your defense, which Terry Bowden has to be feeling good about that, and with two timeouts left, you'll have a chance to get the ball back for a potential game-winning field goal. Well, right now, it's third and goal from the one, and the 37-point underdog is a yard away from taking a late fourth-quarter lead. And you know that's all Terry Bowden's thinking about right that's now. Right. Do you spread it out, spread it out, run the ball, keep your cut or keep your set tight and throw the football? Looks like they're going to spread it out right here. Third and goal for Akron. If you're going to throw it, throw it safe throw. Cole throwing touchdown. There it is. There's your safe throw, Kevin. And I love the play call. He said, forget that. I'm trying to go for a field goal at the end. Let's get it right here. Let's get the lead right here. 4-10 to play in Ann Arbor and Akron stunning Michigan. 23 to 21. Safe throw, pocket movement throw to the outside. Keep it away from the inside defenders like they did last time. Easy pitch and catch. And they are stunned here. Akron has four wins since 2010. 34 losses in that span. They're 3 and 33 the last three years combined. 
and with the extra point, 4-10 to go. They're that close to breaking a 27-game road losing streak. Media, timeout. As Terrell Goodman, the sophomore, with his first touchdown catch of the year. Akron by three, 24-21. Terry Bout trying to pull a gigantic upset. A well, tale of two sidelines. Akron fired up. And Coach Hope trying to get his team fired up for a rally. Terry Bowden trying to come up with the biggest win in Akron football history. Maybe since John Heisman led his Akron squad in 1894 to a win over Ohio State. I love this play call, Kevin, because he came right back and put the ball in Kyle Pohl's hands after a costly interception the series before. Had confidence in his quarterback, got the job done. Short kickoff near the sideline. Some room to the 30-yard line for Chesson. I want to welcome those of you watching the Minnesota Golden Gophers today. 4.05 remaining in the fourth quarter here with Chuck Long and Lisa Byington. I'm Kevin Kugler. That score that you see is correct. Akron has a three-point lead over Michigan with 4.05 to go. Michigan starting on their 30-yard line. Plenty of time here. You can play some four-minute offense. You have everything in your game plan. Don't need to panic or hurry here. On first down, play action. Gardner, a wobbler. That one may have been tipped as he threw it, and it's second down. And our... Duluth trading hardest working players today. The Akron defense, four turnovers forced. That's the most in a game since 2010. You got to give them a lot of credit today. And I, and I give Coach Amato credit for his play calling between blitz and coverage and man coverage and also the front four. The front four of Akron are getting after the offensive line of Michigan. Gardner on the keep. And Gardner with a first down and more. Devin Gardner into Akron territory, stumbling across the 40 and out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. The playmaking of Devin Gardner has been the difference all year long for Michigan so far. In three games, put the ball in the hands of your playmakers when it's crunch time. This is certainly crunch time right now. This is simple draw, quarterback draw play. Michigan now after that 35-yard run at the 35 of Akron. Third carry of 35 or more today. And Gardner's got his team knocking on the door now. On first down for Gallon inside the 20. Gallon out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Another 20-yard pickup, this time through the air. And Michigan answering back quickly down to the Akron 15. One of the things that offensive coordinator Al Borges likes to do after a big play is go right at you with another big play. Heavy play action. Good rhythm and timing for Devin Gardner. Found his buddy. 351 total yards today for Devin Gardner. That puts him over 700 in the last two games combined. Here's where they've been good in the red zone all year. They've had some struggles today, but Gardner looking for the end zone, and it's knocked away by Emmanuel Lardy, and here comes the flag. He swatted one down in the first half in the near corner. This time, though, he's going to be called for the penalty. He just, I believe he just gets his hands on. Pass interference. Defense number four. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. And Lord has been playing well. He'd rather... That, that's pretty nice defense there. He just got his hand on the back. That's how, you, that's how you teach it, though. There's not much more he can do, and he, and he did save a touchdown. First and goal at the two-yard line. Tucson. He'll walk in 
for six in Michigan. Back on top. point gives Michigan the four point lead and Chuck good teams even in games that are not going the way they planned find ways to answer in times of adversity and this Michigan team found a big time answer on that drive they did and they put it in Devin Gardner's hands he's the guy you have to put it in the ball into his hands when the game's on the line and they certainly did that he had a big draw play that led to that touchdown but Just put his hand on the back. It's really good technique. There's not much more you can do as a defender. There's your touchdown. Just a simple off-tackle play. Going over Taylor Lu Luan. Not a bad direction to run behind. An All-American left tackle. And Brady Hoke, who's never lost at home as head coach of the Michigan Wolverines, trying to keep that 16-game home winning streak alive. Here's where the missed field goal opportunity haunts you at the end of the game. If Akron makes a field goal early, it saves you from going for a touchdown late. Did they leave too much time for Akron? 249 and two timeouts. There is a lot of time with two timeouts. From the six. Time. And down just shy of the 25 yard line is Bickley. So because of the field goal situation in the second quarter not getting those now they have to go for a touchdown. But now it's about clock and not downs. So fourth down comes into play and going for it. So you have plenty of downs and need to work the clock as well. But you have plenty of time. There's plenty of time with two timeouts. You know Akron's looking back. Two missed field goals today. An interception from the two-yard line in the end zone. They had chances to have a bigger lead than they did have. And now they've got to try to rally at Michigan Stadium with 2.43 to go from the 25-yard line. And through the hands of the intended receiver Dillard, incomplete Countess out there on the coverage. And Chuck, how big of a factor is it when you have a team that's never won to be put in a situation where they're trying to do something that most thought impossible? Well, Coach Brown has him in a, had him in a great mental state coming into this game. And they have a chance. That's all you can ask for your football team. A chance to win the game at the end. Second down and 10 at the 25. Pole open. Dillard's got it at the 40. And Dillard down just shy of midfield. Jordan Lewis on the tackle. The pickup on the play of 24 yards and an Akron first down. Greg, defensive coordinator Greg Madison brought the blitz on the off the edge. Took a chance. Didn't get there in time. Back to coverage. Four-man rush. Good job of using clock by Coach Bowden here. First down and ten. Hole. Overshoots everybody. The crowd here thought Raymond Taylor had a shot at that one well over his head, and it's second down. Miscommunication there between quarterback and receiver. Good job by Paul recognizing that and just throwing it away. He was thinking one way, and receiver ran the other. Quarterback nightmare, but he did a nice job of, of throwing the ball away, saving the play. Some Michigan defense trying to come up 
with a stop and preserve a narrow victory. Second down and 10 for Akron down four. Oh, Countess was off sides. The pass complete to the Michigan 45-yard line. Just trying to time it a little bit, Chuck. Looked like he took an extra step. That's the cornerbacks often get caught with that. Especially, you know, he's trying to blitz, of course. Offside, defense number 18, five-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. They're not used to watching the ball like defensive linemen are every snap. And they try to time it out. They try to get the rhythm of the offensive cadence to time it out because they, they rarely can see the ball coming from that far away. At the 46 of Michigan, clock running a minute 50 and counting. Second and five for Akron. Over the middle, almost intercepted. Ross had his hands on it, couldn't pull it in, and now it's third down. That is what we call on offense the interception area. More interceptions happen in the middle of the field right over the ball. Just do it behind them. Open your left toe a little bit more. Open your left shoulder a little bit more. And you have a completion. Third down and five. Three-man rush. Drop an eight. Kyle Pohl on the give. Hundley with a first down and much more. Hundley inside the 30 and all the way down. Michigan 27. Jared Wilson with the tackle. 19 yards for Hundley. And an Akron first down. Great call against a three-man front. Against three-man fronts. Coach Madison thought it was going to be a pass. They ran the ball against a three-man front, which was vulnerable to the run. First and 10 at the 27. Akron content to be very patient here. Good cat and mouse game between both coordinators right now. Of course, Terry Bowden being the head coach and coordinator. On first down, pole. With time, a flag down, looking for it all in the end zone and off the fingertips of L.T. Smith. The flag down at the 30. Holding offense, number 76. 10-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. That's the senior, Jared Pugsley, the left tackle for Akron. And Akron's going to have to find another 10 yards. Okay. Is that him right? Yeah. Oh. Get your hands out of there. He was beat. And they always grab when they get beat. So first and 20 at the 37-yard line of Michigan. 59 seconds to play in Ann Arbor. Pole all day to throw. Short pass caught at the 33-yard line. Clock running under 50 seconds to go. Akron with two timeouts. Still playing. They're going to use time. one of them here. Smart move to use a timeout, timeout. here. Akron, their second, 30-second timeout. It, it's all about clock here, so that's why you need to use a timeout. Otherwise, about 15 seconds would roll off the clock before you snap the football. So you want ball plays here. Don't worry about downs. Of course, you got to get the first, but you have four downs to get it. Well, tonight on BTN, Penn State hosts Central Florida, or you'll see Washington take on the improving Illini from Soldier Field. Then we close out with Western Michigan and 16th ranked Northwestern. Tonight, starting at 6 Eastern, presented by Buick on BTN and BTN to go. Go to btn.com slash game finder to find the game available in your region. Some attractive matchups tonight on BTN. Central Florida, a team that took care of Akron easily in their opener this year. Great matchups in the Big Ten this weekend. Full day of it. And this has been fun. Oh, my goodness. Second and 15 at the 32. Akron down four. 45 seconds to play. Cole 
buying time. Throws on the run. It's caught at the 10 yard line and out of bounds. And great job of Paul extending the play with a minimal rush. And that's where it gets dangerous. That's where defensive coordinators drive them crazy when they get outside the pocket. Nice job by Paul on that scramble. LT Smith stepping out. He had some yards to gain as well. But as he turned up field, got that right foot on the sideline. Still plenty of time. But you want to you want ball plays here. You don't want to use a lot of clock. They have to use a timeout if you get tackled with the clock running. They have one left. First and ten at the 11 yard line. And a whistle and a stoppage and delay a game. Delay of game. Offense, number 16. Five yard penalty. The down remains first. Well, that's a bad penalty right there, Chuck. It is, but you still have four downs. Kyle Pohl on first and 15. Can he engineer an upset that will send shockwaves around college football? Michigan trying to stop him. Staying with a four-man rush. Pohl with time for the end zone. Too tall for the 6'5", Jared Dillard. And it's second down, 30 seconds to play. That's a good throw. I like the way Paul threw this ball. Again, on offense, you teach your guys our ball or nobody's ball. Throw it to the back two yards of the end zone. Throw it high enough so either we make the catch or nobody does. That was a smart throw, and he corrected himself from the throw before that got intercepted down there. Well, you know Dillard wanted that one, a Michigan native trying to pull in a touchdown that would have given his team the lead over his former home state school. Second and 15 at the 16. Pull over the middle. Catch is made and down to the one yard line goes LT Smith. 24 seconds to go. Desmond Morgan on the tackle. And it's going to be very close to a first down. Officials time out for an injured player. Oja Mudia was the injured player. Remember, they could get the first without the touchdown. And the first down stops the clock, which is like a mini timeout in college football. That's the way you got to look at it. First downs are mini timeouts. And it is a first down. The ball just inside the one yard line. 24 seconds to play. Get, Akron. Get lined up now. Get lined up, call play, and go. This is where this is where teams get in trouble. They use too much clock. Clock is running, 20 seconds to go. One timeout left for Akron, and now a whistle. And with 15 seconds to play, we've got to stop. Previous play is under further review. So they'll put the time back on the clock, but you have to teach your offense, hey, get ready to go. The clock will start again. They would have used eight or nine seconds there, and that's, those are precious seconds you want to have back. Of course, the, the review will put the time back on the clock anyway. So here's the play that they're looking at. There was no question that it was a catch. They want to check the spot here. Yeah, great catch. Because if it's right. not a first down, obviously, a little more intrigue into this. Nice. Ooh, takes a hit. Hangs on to the football. Tries to stretch it out for the touchdown. There's a lot happening in that, that area right there. What a ball game. Oh, my goodness. Terry Bowden trying to build an Akron program. I'd say rebuild, Chuck, but they've really not been anywhere to rebuild. That, it's a building of a program. Uh, as Coach Amato put it yesterday, they are just now putting in the mortar, mm -hmm. is how he put it. So Pretty. it's from the ground up. Coach Hoke, meanwhile, trying to will his team to victory one week after the thriller against Notre Dame. What a change in emotion it would be for the Michigan Wolverines the following week to fall to Akron. Frustrating for Coach Hoke. You sit there on the sideline, you go, what is wrong with my football team today? 
We had such a great win last week, but it happens. Kids get emotional from week to week. It's hard to keep their emotions in check. The ruling on the field was first and goal. They're checking not only the spot, but the clock. As Chuck mentioned, to make sure that the right time is left on the clock. That's obviously extremely critical in this situation. Should be should go back to 23, I believe. We're about to get our ruling here. And you need every second you can get. After further review, the runner was down at the one yard line. The ball would be placed at the one yard line. Third down and a half yard to go. The clock will start on the ready for play. And well, they're not going to put time back on the clock. Oh. So the clock will start. It's third down and huh. half a yard. One timeout remains for Akron. Now the officials are conferring again. I think they're discussing that. It will stay 15 seconds okay. to go. The clock running now. Kyle Cole. Too long. Takes a lot of time. Toss play. Chisholm. Chisholm. Can't out. get there. They've got to take a timeout with five seconds to play in the game. It'll be fourth down, and this timeout. will be the play. Akron. Their third and final timeout. This will be the play that determines the game. Fourth down, Akron ball, right around the four-yard line of Michigan. Five seconds to go. Just a little power sweep from the shotgun formation. Old-school football with two lead blockers. Looked like Chisholm should have stayed in the outside more. Must have saw an opening inside, tried to take it. Michigan defenders rallied well. Here's the ball game. Good tackle by Desmond Morgan. Fourth down. One play to pull an upset. One defensive stop to save the game. And who knows, maybe your season. They're doing the right thing. They're spreading it out. Give a chance. All man coverage with a blitz look by, by Michigan. Pressure coming. Pull for the end zone. No good. Incomplete. Time has expired. And Michigan hangs on to beat Akron 28 to 24. Great effort by Akron today. Could really build off of that. And Michigan hangs on. Live by the blitz. Die by the blitz. They brought it. And it worked out. Michigan gets to live again for next week. Going undefeated. Wow. What a finish. What a ball game. And Michigan survives after this play. Just an up-the-middle blitz. They had a chance. Kyle Poole taking a big hit and just missing Zach Durazio, who was the intended receiver. Lisa's standing by with Coach. After he gets a drink of water, you deserve that drink of water. How do you describe this battle here today? Well, number one, I give Akron a lot, a lot of credit. You know, they came in there, they played their tails off. They played harder than we did. Played mistake three more than we did. And, you know, you play like that, you can't win championships or games. When you were up 7-3 to three at the half, what was your biggest message to your football team going into the second half? We had 30 minutes to play. You know, 30 minutes to go out there and play better. Some areas I think we did. Some areas we didn't. You know, and, you know, our defense kind of kept us in the football game so but that's what teams have to do it was an up and down game for your quarterback Devin Gardner but he looked like a different player in the third quarter what was the difference for him then well I you know I wish I could tell you you know I think if I had the answer we bottle it up and make a lot of money but uh, you know he, he's got he's resilient he has to be anytime you're a quarterback you've got to keep coming back thank you thanks well what a ball game today 
at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor and the Michigan Wolverines go to 3-0. and Not necessarily the way they planned as they get all they want and more from Akron, but Michigan hangs on 28-24, our final. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network. For Chuck Long and Lisa Byington, I'm Kevin Kugler saying so long from Ann Arbor. Paul Burmeister and Derek Rackley are standing by as we send you to Michigan State and Youngstown State.